this title, I'm staying over history in the 1920s, 1980s, uh, I should acknowledge that I feel quite overwhelmed because <laughs> to do a, well, a general impression of all uh, Spanish urban evolution during this time uh, seemed to me quite difficult and I think I don't have enough time to, to say uh, everything I would like. I will try to, to be respectful with the time. But at the same time, well, uh, I feel quite presumptuous to, and quite insecure because there's not too much, uh, too much uh, journal approaches in books and academic works uh, to lean on. Well, in the broad sense of urban history that I try to uh, to try to develop. Well, my previous uh, my previous uh, uh, research has been focusing late 19th century and beginning of the 20th century Madrid history and we are in that seminar world, well, that uh, group of research we are trying to, um, to launch uh, a, new, uh, well, a new interpretation of Madrid during the 20th century uh, we are we're beginning in this moment uh, well uh, uh, I should uh, well, uh, advise that my presentation would not focus in urban planning Story of urbanism. I will make some reference, but I think that being uh, uh, Javier Montus uh, uh, here, will, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, well, an authority. To, to, uh, I will, I will uh, give the floor for, for him. I will suppose, well, my own conception of urban history, uh, or, or uh, maybe we, we, we uh, will. We'll see uh, which is my, my, my particular vision of urban history uh, 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 based on my, on my interpretation of this Well, I can make a, well, like a, 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 a general description. I, I, should, uh, I look for a, an urban history uh, interested in well, building on how the, the city is built uh, from below. How neighbors, inhabitants, traders, workers, landowners, visitors, tourists, and other agents contributed to make cities, and not only uh, politicians or urban planners. I focus in well, that's a social approach to urban history, but I uh, uh, I focus also in uh, in urban life rather than urbanism, using that distinction of of, of Enrique Ferre in, in in the right to the city. Well, I'm very interested in how experimenting the city and well, leaving the city contributes to well, to resignify or to uh, make another well, uh, sense of the, of the city. Well, for my uh, presentation, I will propose a simple, simple plan. Which was the first picture of the uh, city? Uh, uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. This is Somorostro uh, in 1966. Uh, and this is Madrid, uh, the same place with a different point of view in the photograph. This is Atocha uh, in 1920 and 1960, uh, 1970. Uh, more or less today, luckily, it's not with the same aspect that we have. It's more that that stylistic that we say in, in a sense. So, well, my, my presentation, the plan of presentation, is very simple. I will uh, try to make an approach to uh, general evolution of urban Spain during, well, between the, those years, 1920 and 1980s. Uh, first of all, well, making some consideration of well, the overall uh, evolution and some, uh, uh, some reflections on global and uh, local history. And, and then, well, trying to make or present a kind of periodization you know, in four states. I will, I will develop it later. And secondly, I will be, uh, uh, a second part, shorter, I will make some proposal for an agenda for research in urban history for the Spanish uh, uh, 20th century. Uh, well, I will propose some topics you know, uh, beyond urban planning that I would say is the thing that is, has been studied uh, the most in, in, the, in the last decade or the material evolution of the city well, to propose some topics on uh, cultural and, uh, uh, and social history of the city. 
uh, or social or cultural urban history. Uh, finally, my presentation is a kind of uh, balance of historiography on urban history in Spain. Uh, in which I will not be very critis, uh, critical to urban planning history of history of urbanism. Uh, well, uh, uh, a kind of captative and evolution type, as, <laughs> as teacher would say. No, I, I will be more critical with uh, my own tribe, with my own my closest colleagues, the historians, which I think and I. And I advance that they have this mind in Spain, the importance of urbanization as a well, social, cultural, and political transformation of Spain during the last year. Well, I will, I will expand that uh, uh, later. But let me stop in those uh, no two photographs just to, well, to show the different layers or to, to, to to make sensible about the different layers of transformation and of evolution of social life in, in Madrid, in a particular place, but that there are symptoms of global kinds of uh, transformation uh, in the 20th century. Well, maybe uh, if, we, uh, if we place uh, ourselves in the 1970s uh, photograph, maybe we will look uh, to the first photograph as a traditional organization of the city, of the tradition, or a city or well, the place is uh, uh, difficult to circulate with a lot of things, <coughs> but it's a, a special day, it's like a, a festival, a verbena uh, in Madrid, in a part of the city which is very important because it's at the doors of the old city, this is at Tocha where the main railway station, railway station is now in place. It was not the only station at this time, but well, it was a, a node of communication or well, uh, a point of well, distinction between old city and the 19th, 19th century modern city or new city that uh, has been developed in the last year. Well, traditional, not so much because even the facility, facilities for transport has incorporated some of the innovation of the time. And um, while well, verbenas and, um, and sociality in public space were, grow were growing at that time. So it was not something well, we can consider it as um, traditional from 1970s uh, perspective. The other one well, could be symbolized as the modernization at this time with motorization and incorporation of the uh, automobiles and well, that kind of infrastructure that well, were good in the middle of the city without uh, uh, well, a problematic vision of the patrimonial patrimon and, and so on. Well, uh, now we could consider that this is something like well, a now full and a modern uh, modernization, not desirable. Well, I will, I will, uh, uh, I will add something about it uh, later on, and will, will the need of uh, problemize uh, to to make a more problematic vision of modernity <coughs> and urban modernity, uh, while dialogue, making a dialogue with uh, environmental history also, and well, uh, with the difference of, the, of that kind of evolution. At the same time. Well, this is Franco and a Francoist image. Uh, well, we try, well, we tend to consider Franco's regime as well a sort of tradition, but we can see that well, during the regime, during the dictatorship, we would have incorporated some of the well, modern global trends of the of the time. Well, there, there was a kind of synchronicity at this time, and different changes that have been occurring in different cities were occurring also in. in well, just to present well, the overall vision of uh, uh, urban evolution in this space. Some data and some, uh, well, some information to, uh, to know how, how uh, urban evolution was in Madrid and in Spain uh, during this year. I take advantage from well, from an important uh, work that was published in 1994, and Jose Luis Leona from the Montreux are here, 
And well, I should uh, I should underscore that that this, it is the general the general work for Spanish urban evolution with lasted for for the moment as the uh, of the as, as a, a general reference for for the field. That is one of the problems of our bibliography that uh, we uh, we uh, still need some renewal on that. And well, I think they solve uh, much of the of the of the problems of description of general demographical evolution. In, uh, the chapter that uh, David Spain Breyer has has uh, written about how Spain uh, how Spain became an urban society during the 20th century. Well, this data, the quantitative data that could uh, offer an image of. Uh, a, a, a predominantly rural country in 1930 and 1981, well, we have uh, uh, almost 70% of the people living in towns, uh, up to 5,000 inhabitants, and 60% well, uh, income is uh, 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 over 10,000. Well, if we see the evolution of the different uh, uh, great cities of uh, Greater cities in Spain, well, we can see also that it will be an increase of the cities uh, over uh, 100,000 inhabitants in Well, at the same time, well, well as, as I, will, I will underscore later, uh, uh, is after 1960 when the acceleration of the process has been, uh, been experimented. Uh, is uh, with the industrialism and for this cycle, when, well, the, the, the concentration in, in, in increasing great uh, increasing big, uh, cities has been uh, developed in 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 a state. At the same time, well, one phenomenon that we are talking about a lot uh, these later years in Spain, the the ending of the inner Spain, how where, how how uh, a part of Spain has been uh, ended, uh, has been announced uh, uh, in, in this time. Uh, yes, rural exodus took uh, place in this, in this time. Uh, but, uh, and I will uh, link with, uh, with one of uh, my colleagues uh, who has uh, talked before, uh, I don't think that quantitative data resume uh, all the process. It's important, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an important indicator, but I think in 1981 also there's other thing that explain that Spain has become, became a, a urban society. Is that place, well, urbanization and as a way of life using the, using the expression of this rule has been imposed in, in the other country. I will say that, well, uh, um, at that time, it's, uh, uh, one, um, uh, when the connection by transport and technology between different uh, cities, towns, and villages has been complete, and constant flows of people, goods, and information that was blurring the distinction between rural and urban areas. The influence of the cities over the villages in 1981 uh, and rural uh, the influence of the cities over villages and rural areas was uh, more and more powerful. And well, we can find some uh, patterns of social and cultural behavior even in the villages. Uh, now it's evident with the digital networks and so on. But even in 1981, I think the ethos of the city is well, being imposed in the overall, in the overall country. And this is the dimension of urban history I'm most interested in. And um, to uh, identify the cultural and uh, uh, social process that will uh, well, uh, testify that, uh, that imposition of, uh, of urban history. Uh, well, uh, again, for the overall, uh, for the overall uh, uh, description of the overall the evolution of urban Spain. Well, I will focus in four states of periods of, of, of this evolution. I will uh, maybe the chronology 1920s 
1920s, 1980s, uh, making <coughs> some problems. This is not the chronology I, I will I will have chosen. But well, I think we can use it. I I try to consider as the beginning, the interwar period, as a well, urban crisis. <coughs> uh, an urban crisis not in a well, in a bad sense. It's a time of debate and uh, confront different ideas of how to put order on the uh, on the on the city life in different aspects. It's not only in the urban planning, but also in the regulation of the urban, uh, in the public space of the regulation of the market and the, and the economic uh, the economic life, or even in the behaviors in the in the in the, in the public space. I think, well, this is a urban crisis that has been, well, uh, uh, has been originated in the late 19th century and has been, well, increasing during the beginning of the 20th, uh, uh, the 20th century. Well, I don't think, and, and I think it's a global trend. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can see similar uh, conflicts and problems and debates in, the, in Europe, in, in Western uh, <coughs> world or in the world. Maybe uh, we lack a, an integration of uh, Spanish narratives in a, in a global, in a global. Well, anyway, 1936-1939, the Spanish Civil War will be a stop of this evolution, as well as the same uh, phenomena as uh, the Second World War. Uh, uh, the destruction of part of the cities, not only material, but also uh, well, a social and cultural culture and behaviors and conceptual ideals and values. Well, at this moment, Spain begins another well, evolution that well, I will discuss. This is a particular, a specific, a different evolution or has links or similarities to global, global trends. I will distinguish two periods which are not very original, which are the political uh, uh, states normally used in Spanish history, the first Franco <coughs> and the second Franco. And the difference is between a little bit uh, linked to well, uh, the connection with, the, uh, with other countries and global trends and well, its isolation in different. And finally, I will find this with a crisis. I think it is a general crisis, a global crisis. That one, which opens the doors to the post-industrial city. But then Spain has a special signification because there is a, well, a, 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 a transformation of the political system and, well, and well, expressions of, of, of change in different and different. Well, the thing that I'm using uh, some uh, approach that has been developed by Jose Maria Cardesi in, in different texts, in Roman history, but in Journal of Roman history and, and Spanish reviews, is to think about if uh, Spanish urban history in the 20th century is a different uh, evolution from the global trends or uh, or participate of some some of the global global trends. Well, it's, uh, it's, a, well, it's a reflection based or that begins with a reference to that kind of well, that is law used by the dictators in, during this 1960s. Spain is different to attract uh, tourists uh, to Spain. Uh, as a slogan from the Ministry of, of Tourism and Propaganda. Same. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to show Madrid in that in that, uh, in that uh, advertisement. This uh, a city is shown to the world just to the tourists, but with an advertising, Spain is not a Western country. You can came to an exotic place, but well, maybe you can behave <laughs> like. In well, uh, I would criticize that, that, that vision, consider that Spain has been in a 
exotic path during the Francoism. Well, I think there have been particularities, but uh, some, some similarities. The problem, and I think, is to analyze how uh, the attitude of politicians, authorities, and agents involved in the urban transformation, uh, how they face it, uh, uh, global influence or foreign influence, and how they try to control this influence social forces that were transforming the city. At the same time, I put, well, I, do, I, will, I, I won't uh, develop that part, maybe in the debate. I will try to make, or I am trying to make us the further exercise to see how social forces are well, influencing the transformation of the city, and some actors are trying to put order in, that, in, in those social forces. I will advance that Franco, Franco's dictatorship was, and it's not something very original of my part, it was in effect trying to put order in the city, even if they had some ideas to how to uh, make cities or society more or less uh, uh, linked to, to a general order that well, I would like to show it in, in the different states of this evolution, of these four states that I will uh, uh, present. Well, as I said before, the first stage will be uh, the interwar period between uh, 1918 and 1936, before uh, civil war, when modernization in urban Spain uh, has been launched and was acquiring a great speed. Well, uh, civil war uh, will be the stop of this evolution. Uh, this, well, this urban well, uh, transformation that its origin could be uh, looked at well, in the mid 19th century. Uh, as I say, um, in this, uh, I, I will. I would like to, uh, to consider this period, mm, well, not a zenith or a culmination, maybe a boiling point. It's a moment that different trends of transformation in different aspects of the city life or city organization has been accomplished. And we are in, well, in this sense, I, uh, I understand modernity. It's a rupture with traditional forms of organization in different aspects that will be the long running, Barcelona as an example that I use in this uh, layer, <coughs> the OCD and the Ensanche de Ferna uh, already developed and well, the, uh, uh, the suburbs uh, as well as peripherias are already uh, uh, standing uh, in the, in the suburbs. Well, the city as, as an artifact has been completely renewed. But also, in that time, uh, has been important urban renewals adopting foreign and local solutions to uh, well, problems of transport, or problems of sanitation, or uh, different technical, technolo technological uh, problems. At the same time, uh, uh, cities uh, has been renewed his modern, his uh, economic models, and well, even if in Barcelona has been developed the uh, industrial <coughs> before, in Spain, in Madrid, or in other cities, we can consider uh, make a transition to uh, uh, to new to new uh, economy. Uh, particularly, as I say, uh, the rise of a service sector in Madrid. Uh, for a long time, Madrid has been considered like a, an old city in a traditional uh, economy organization, but uh, for the 1930s, we can consider that it's a modern city in the terms of, well, of a capitalistic uh, 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 development. <coughs> but at the same time, we should consider the transformation, the social composition, a social organization, and some cultural uh, manifestation of modernity in 
at least these two great cities that exist in Spain. Yeah, say before, but Barcelona and Madrid, they have, well, they are like the, the dual uh, leadership in, in the Spain uh, uh, urban network from this time with a million people in 1930, it's one of them, and many more, and, and certainly more with the surrounding uh, uh, towns and villages in Conurbe basins. Oh, uh, well, the segregation process of social classes in different neighborhoods has well, uh, created uh, uh, more distance between some groups and, well, as Jose Luis Ollón, for example, and different uh, uh, scholars in Madrid has, has studied, well, there's a clearly uh, uh, and these uh, conformation of social classes in the city are different in different spaces. Uh, and as we have well, defended for Madrid, Bilbao, and other, and other cities, middle classes uh, has been appearing in the social landscape of the city, uh, at least in a middle class, which is a, a controversial uh, uh, denomination. Uh, and very interesting for the, this time because it represents people who are not, mm, well, who begins to define themselves with different uh, uh, elements uh, other than uh, work or capital in economic terms. Uh, lifestyles and uh, presentation in public space begin to, well, to uh, acquire some uh, importance in the social definition. That will be the, uh, the last uh, aspect of this urban modernity. Uh, in Madrid and Barcelona, in Bilbao, <coughs> Sevilla, Valencia and other great cities, uh, uh, it has been appearing different uh, cultural phenomena that will be uh, associated with, uh, with uh, modernity and with a cosmopolitan culture that has been expanding throughout the global uh, urban network uh, at this time. Uh, I will express the importance of the development of consumerism, consumerism and the leisure, a new leisure and industrial cultural industries as providers of reference and uh, contents to create that of these new uh, uh, social and cultural identities. At the time. I think I, I, didn't, I didn't prepare a, a layer on it, but I think new uh, a modern woman, a modern ideals of woman, will be one of the global uh, signs of this cosmopolitan. Uh, well, 1956. Civil war will be stopped and, well, and the, to this evolution, or at least a rupture with previous uh, evolution. I often use this uh, photograph which shows uh, uh, the Telefonica building, the telephone uh, company uh, of Spain uh, building, which was the first skyscraper in Spain, in Madrid, and the tallest for some months. Uh, during the, the late 1920s and uh, after in, in, in Brussels and other skies But well, this is a via, a, a, a kind of avenue opening in the city center uh, in an Osmanian intervention during the first uh, decades of the 20th century war. Uh, in fact, Finished uh, after the civil war, and this is the well, the effects of the war in this uh, symbolic uh, in this symbolic building. Uh, 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 well, Madrid has been bombed, as you, you may know, and well, I think that represents uh, very clearly one aspect of the Franco and military uprising in 1936. It was. And not rise, uh, rising against democracy, but also against 
modern urban culture and modern uh, trends that they consider that they were mm, uh, threatening the Spanish uh, identity. Well, that is as to uh, the <coughs> following states. I will stand for well, this the first Francoism or will be 1940s and 1950s more. Uh, that I consider that it's been characterized by the, uh, an anti anti urban attitude by the uh, dictators. I think, but also a kind of inefficiency in trying to put some order in the social forces that were pushing to more urbanization and more, more concentration in urban cities. Well, one of, and I'm not going to develop the, the subject because maybe uh, Javier Moncruz will do it, but uh, the plan uh, Mirador for Madrid in 1946 as the one, the, the, the first plan to uh, renew the capital of the war, uh, will symbolize that anti urban uh, uh, attitude of. Uh, uh, of the Franco's authorities trying to put a limit to the expansion of the city, green boundaries, and so on. But there's a lot of other signs in well, popular culture or, 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 or discourse of politicians. I will remind my, well, and Margot's uh, fasted uh, film, Surcos, the Santonio mm -hmm. Milas Conde which offers an image and sent a message to the people in Spain in 1951, so the year of that film, saying that don't come to Madrid because coming to Madrid is like, well, it's a threat a to, to social, moral order and family, uh, and family life. You are, if you come to Madrid, you are not going to find uh, the promised land that you are thinking but that was not the reality. The problem in Madrid, the great cities at that, at that time, is that people continue to go to the cities uh, despite the uh, desires of the dictators. Uh, well, the reasons were different. Well, we must study that, that reason. There are, not, uh, there are not too many studies uh, on immigration on, on, on a local scale. But from political persecution, uh, from poverty, and well, also uh, following a trend that has been before uh, uh, political changes. People were uh, uh, fleeing from, from, from a countryside that could not provide uh, uh, a way of living for all the population in Spain. That to remark that. Uh, there was a social overflow that urbanists should put order, but that Franco is with first plans of uh, first urban planning uh, project couldn't uh, uh, satisfy. Uh, this is the time of authorship that could be well, a symbol of what or the way in which Franco's and his collaborators consider the uh, social life, but also the city. Autarchy of the intervention of the market and to control uh, everything. The Franco is in his first states was not uh, capitalist in a, in a, in a, in a, in a proper sense. It was an anti-liberal regime that tried to uh, stop the market and try to put a military order in the social life. So, but the uh, outcome was that black market uh, developed in very different aspects, like through our sense of the uh, informal market of the of the of housing. I'm not going to explain to, to this uh, audience and the informal market of Goods uh, uh, that during the fifties was uh, well for 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 some people a way of becoming rich and for other people uh, a problem to uh, to, to 
to, to get all the, all the basic uh, foods we need. Uh, well, this is the general plan of Madrid. And these are images of the uh, informal uh, market of housing that has been developed in the inner, well, the sunset uh, parks of Madrid, in Arganzuela. This is highly conquistador. Uh, some of the houses that lasted until the 1960s. I think that the, the photograph is from the 60s, when the first uh, developments of housing by private companies have been put in place. This is a, a photo from Barcelona. Well, it's a very well known photo. Well, uh, well, so the contrast between well, the industrial city and the outskirts of the city were informal housing has been uh, Well, <coughs> during the first decades of the Franco-Communist dictatorship, what happened was the destruction of middle classes, as has been flourished uh, during the 20s and the 30s. Uh, during the 20s and the 30s, we can consider that some middle classes linked to professional economy or rise of professional society has been uh, consolidated. Now there's another kind of middle class more linked to power and to what well, uh, benefits uh, took from corruption and black uh, uh, That kind of, uh, source, uh, well, of, of, of urban configuration uh, with that contrast between the old city Official city and informal city also push to a more contrast uh, opposition between classes. And it's not, I, I, won't, I won't talk about working class uh, extension of poverty in that, uh, in, that, uh, in that period. At the same time, the social and cultural life, which demands to be uh, researched for this time, because there are not so many and serious works on it has been impoverished during this time. There's well, popular classes that have no so much money to spend as they had in the 20s and the 30s to go for, uh, to leisure, games and so on. But I will underscore that the modern pleasures of a cosmopolitan culture uh, has been well, uh, has been has been experienced for, a, for an elite. We will we should study also uh, how, or as a book says, uh, uh, well, like life could be a uh, wonderful for some uh, chosen ones in Madrid or in Barcelona or in the city. <laughs> well, second stage of my, and I will resume a little bit of this. See that time it has been running. Well, second stage in the Franco dictatorship will be adapting modernity, uh, uh, but only a part of the modernity. Uh, we could, well, I use that image uh, of one of the emblematic uh, buildings in Madrid, Torres Blancas, as one of the well, uh, symbols of the incorporation of Spain to uh, modern trends in design and architecture. Uh, but also uh, these images of, of cars flowing to Barcelona in the 60s to just to show that uh, well, motorization has been incorporated to uh, urban life in Madrid, that they are living in Spain, which means that uh, well, a new uh, prosperity has been noticed in Spain, at least for a part of the, of the population. At the same time, our uh, housing problem has tried to be solved by different ways in the in the 50s, 60s, and well, uh, private companies uh, enter in the market and well, uh, try to solve the the uh, secular problem of, of housing and the the more and more urgent problem uh, after the civil. Uh, uh, is these states of uh, Spanish? Dictatorship that we consider as 
capitalism, a kind of capitalism where free market is not, not totally adopted as, uh, as being appropriate as, as, as a solution. Uh, but, uh, well, I will remark that this implies some transformation in the urban network. First of all, because there's no free market, there's some plans of development for the industrialism in Spain, and well, that foster a little bit a modification of the urban network. Uh, the polo de desarrollo, goals of development in Spain that well, foster some industrial and um, urban development in some middle small towns in the in the in the inner towns. But also one thing that I think we could consider more in uh, future accounts of urban evolution of Spain is the tourism of the great industry and the great business and the great uh, uh, salvation for the Spanish economy in the, in the, in the 60s. Which implies also an important and radical transformation of the landscape of uh, uh, all this development was not uh, extent of inequality. Okay. Is, uh, well, it's what the time, the period we sometimes, I don't like to use that denomination, we consider as the Spanish economic miracle. But, uh, well, it's a Spanish uh, economic miracle which is based in the expulsion of a great part of the population. The, Immigration and well, with so many qualities, well, great prosperity, but well, with very different of distribution of levels. Uh, uh, this is the time when uh, cities grow more intensely until the 80s. Uh, um, but and I didn't put in the presentation, but I think it's something very important. It's a uh, both a specific and differential uh, uh, growth of the cities in social and <coughs> social and composition of population. I think one difference in Spain is the uh, not reception of immigrants in Spain during this time. We are expulsing all well, other countries experience, but I think this one thing is could be taken on account for a reflection of global trends and cosmopolitan culture at this time. Anyway, the economic development uh, implies some uh, paradoxical efforts for the dictators. Well, the idea for the technocrats, of the, those on government at this time, um, uh, very linked to the office day, was to incorporate to incorporate technological innovations, but to uh, block all possibilities of moral, social, and political uh, reforms. But the thing is, well, opening the economy of Spain to uh, influence from abroad necessarily brought, brought some influence in different uh, in different spaces, and even the well, the social development and the formation of middle classes uh, uh, opening well, some uh, kinds of, uh, of, of cultural social partners that uh, uh, initiated the questioning of the regime. Uh, only thing about uh, uh, only thing about the, uh, the increase of the number of uh, students in the universities and the uh, uh, life in the city center, or only think about the uh, arrival of cultural and industry, industries products and more new reference to create again social identities with new materials. Thus uh, the mass media is influenced during this time and the connection, and the increasing connection of the cities uh, of Spain with well, uh, broader networks has uh, opened the door to uh, new influence and a kind of reconstruction of a cosmopolitan form. That's another field should be uh, research in the, in the future. Uh, 
And I will finish, and it's only a well, uh, later presentation, a simple presentation with only one layer, with what I consider that is the final stage, that uh, the beginning of urban crisis. I'm not very sure if I can decide if this urban crisis has been has finished or not, but the thing is that there's a transition to well, I mean, all the different, the postmodern or the post-industrial uh, city. It's very interesting that that uh, photograph, because it's one of the neighbor associations that well, Benin is fighting not against the regime, because his reivindication or his uh, demanding uh, uh, the the, the, the facilities for that neighborhoods that have been growing in a formal way or in the hands of the, or under the direction of private companies with a lack of facilities and uh, provisional service. The thing is, well, it's Asociación de Latinos Neighborhood Association of Casitas, one of the, well, uh, uh, that was one of the new neighborhoods in Madrid. And they are demanding in some, in some moment amnesty, amnesty for uh, political and personal officials. No? So that, uh, well, that is low, uh, uh, from the, well, the daily uh, or the urban condition of living to a political reality. Uh, well, 1973 I and mean, 1979, because of the uh, petrol sucks that, well, put uh, in problem the Spanish economy, which is at this time very dependent of uh, global economy, particularly European economy and its tourist uh, coming, uh, uh, coming during the south. Uh, uh, what, I, what I think is important in this, this crisis, not only in the urban solution that has been made, or how Franco's uh, urban um, the Franco cities has been rectified, modified, renewed during the 80s and the 90s. Is how during these years there's like a showcase of some attitudes, behaviors, and social phenomena and cultural phenomena that well, express well, the ruptures with the uh, Franco society and, 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 and the entering a new era. Of democracy from from below, and just to finish, uh, well, uh, I, I will finish with some examples on this. Uh, I will propose some uh, some ideas for a further uh, development of urban history in the 20th century. I will be very very fast as to, to let the time to the discussion. Well, one of my conclusions is we need, there are some uh, studies on it, but we need more uh, studies from below in a social history approach. I, I consider very interesting and very inspiring all the, uh, the studies on how the informal city has been uh, uh, built and organized uh, for normal people, current people, but we can extend that kind of uh, analysis to middle classes, to other kind of neighborhoods, uh, the relationship between, between, for example, land ownership, farming ownership, and social formation in the uh, second half of the 20th century. Uh, uh, I will uh, express my interest in neighborhood associations and as the origin of political mobilization, but not only in the uh, end of the dictatorship. The problem, uh, as I see, is in general historical uh, approach from historians. A neighborhood association is like an anecdote that could be put with the nationalist movement, with the uh, labor movement, and so on. Well, I think, well, as has been uh, asserted in some studies uh, recently, neighbor associations were the responsible to put more people in the streets in some moments in the Spanish transition to democracy than that. 
So it was, it has been dismissed in the, uh, in, the, in the narratives of the Spanish uh, evolution. But I would say that we can uh, trace this kind of phenomena uh, before it. So in the 20s and the 30s, were also a mod uh, incorporation to modern political culture by the way of demanding a uh, solution to neighborhoods in bad situations, for example. So, so the, the criticism is not only for this uh, uh, urban history of Franklin, but also to, for, for the whole uh, <coughs> Well, uh, uh, a new uh, a new evolution of the post of modernization and one in an environmental uh, approach just to consider what was considered modernization in some, in some times and what was the cause uh, of, uh, uh, of some uh, innovation, for example, with motorization. This is uh, on the left is Madrid, the, well, is the M30, which is the, which is the the annular ring. What? Annular ring. Yeah. Uh, creates a boundary in, in, the, in, the, in the inner city and now with all well, the debates about cars and city. We have to uh, think about it. And then, so, uh, leisure and sociability through the city. This is the same place in different moments in Madrid. This is the Edificio Carrión, which is one of the uh, uh, modern buildings of the 1920s and 30s in the Gran Vía, uh, which imitates the, the, the building from, the, from, from Broadway in, in, in the principal uh, uh, avenue in Madrid and the different uses you can see during time. This, uh, Famous photo of this, uh, from the 40s. Uh, this one. And then uh, the third one is the promotion of the ethic. I think it's a very interesting photo. It's, 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 it's uh, mainly uh, modernity and tradition. <laughs> How to make a Hollywood production of a uh, typical Spanish uh, historical. Uh, 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 actor as the thief with the best and so on. And then, well, Callao and Carrión, the city plus in the in the 60s. And finally, I think, and this is well, one of the well, one of the fields I'm, I'm working on. Uh, <coughs> well, we have to take account of a gender trauma in urban history and uh, how different uh, configuration of the city, material, social, and moral uh, dimension, can affect to well, uh, gender building of identity. So women and the city in different times should be uh, uh, researched. But also, at least in Spain, we have a debt with uh, well, the study of sexual design and the modern city, which I think is a well, already classical uh, uh, field of studies, but that well, in Spain we don't have any. We, well, we have some some approaches or some studies, but not with an urban uh, with an urban approach. I think it's very uh, symptomatic the 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 the, the, the manifestation of new. Uh, identities, you know, normatives, uh, uh, how the city enables or not uh, that manifestation of social identity. Well, these are some ideas well, just to, well, it's a quick sign of what we have done until the moment, but also a promise of a lot of work for, for the future and, and for uh, the scholars that will uh, like to. Uh, Thank you very much.